we store two flags. One of them is whether the field value is selected or not, and the second one is whether the field value is possible or not. Meaning that then you have two, you have four possible combinations, not three. So this is a logical invariance to assign colors to field values, to calculate the state vectors. And that is basically what we do here. If I make a selection like that, then I, for every simple table, has have a, an additional column here. Selection state and state. Selection state and state. And I do this for all simple tables. So I keep track of what I have possible or what I have not. In addition, I have a state only for my data table. I don't have a selection state, <coughs> it's just a normal state. So this is the bookkeeping, internal bookkeeping that is needed to keep track of what we have selected up here. So this is the logical inference that you see below. And in addition, you have objects that are calculated on separate threads from the data down the logical inference. So, some implications of the calculation. Um, if you have field references from different tables inside the same aggregation function, you will use more RAM. And therefore, you should probably consider moving one of the two fields to the thread table. That's one. Another one, which is a little, a little more subtle, is that the Kix engine could calculate the wrong number. Now, if you have the first one here. If order month equals five, then sum invoice amount. Now, the person that writes this, he thinks, I want to sum the invoice amount in the invoice line table, right? Will it sum it there? Exactly. Since I have a field reference from another table, it will create all the combinations. Now, think of a database where you have order lines and invoice lines as a many-to-many -many relationship then this will explode. It will be many, many more records to sum. So this will give you the wrong answer. Where is this one? Ta-da! Was an exact one. So if I make my selection, and that is stored in a state vector, and then I write some set expression, then I just have an additional set of state vectors that all refer to the same symbol table. So when I make a, an aggregation using a set analysis expression, it does not use those as flags for whether I should include the record or not. It uses those flags as well. So internally, it's very simple. And also, it's important to understand that the logical inference engine that evaluates the set expression, that is evaluated before the cube is expanded or unfolded. So a set expression cannot be evaluated row by row in the table. So, a couple of final words on our set analysis. Let's say that you have this expression. It's really not very strange. I have a dollar expansion that fetches the largest number of x, and then I want to choose months that are smaller or equal to that number. The first thing that happens is that the dollar expansion is evaluated. Dollar expansions are always evaluated first of all, before anything else. And in dollar expansion, that means that, in fact, that is replaced by something else. But the point is that dollar expansion goes before the expression is parsed. So when the parser kicks in, then it sees this expression up here. And the parser recognizes that there's a set expression, and then it sends that set expression to the logical inference engine that creates the state space and then finally the cube expansion takes place and the aggregation takes place using the new set your state space as flags for the aggregation. 